as Clown Week continues on the channel, we have Larson and Ripple responding to the SEC's decline to respond to those interrogatories, and we have Fox Business taking note on what Deaton's been saying and what the XRP community has been highlighting about the Ripple lawsuit. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. We are about 10 days away from the anniversary of the channel, I had a big stretch goal of trying to get to 15,000 subscribers by that anniversary date. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're closing in, so it would take a nice push here at the end, but I think we can do it. Hit a like if you find any value. Let's dive into the market before we look at the headlines for the afternoon. We are up almost 4% on the day. 2.2 trillion almost uh, with Bitcoin, over 48K. Ethereum closing in on 3,600. Cardano hanging out around 250. And XRP at $1.12, furthering the separation between it and Solana, holding down the sixth spot. Now let's look at Fox Business. I don't want to go through the entire video here because I think it's important that you check out and uh, listen, like, and subscribe here on the channel that is publishing these. So Ellie uh, Terrett is the producer for uh, Mr. Gasparino, and I think it's really important to show that support from the community. So I'm just going to play a little snip here. I'll link it down below. Go watch the whole thing. It's a good segment. It's only five minutes, uh, but definitely show the support there and uh, comment, comment, comment. That will show her as a producer for him that this is something we want to have investigated more. So let's listen in just a quick bit here at the start of this interview segment. Let's get to Charlie Gasparino joining us now on what's at stake, I mean, not this, just for XRP, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty big case. And I'll, I'll tell you why, Liz. Um, not only is the SEC suing Ripple saying that it, it was it, it, did, it issued XRP illegally without registering them as securities, thus its whole operation is essentially uh, illegal, more or less. I'm paraphrasing, but that's kind of what they're saying. Um, some of the XRP holders are now suing the SEC as well saying that uh, the SEC is applying different standards to different, uh, to different players, uh, accusing the SEC, some SEC officials of benefiting other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum as they do business with Ethereum. That's in some of these documents. It's so there you have it. He has started talking about it. Listen to that video, get the full story that he's got, and he says that he'll continue digging in on this. I think that's very important. Again, show the support there for the community and for the investigative uh, journalism because they're going to dig in and they will find things that are being posted by the community and they'll continue to dive deeper. And the more interest that you show, the uh, more work that they will do on the case. So I think that will be very, very beneficial. We've already seen things highlighted on CNBC before. We've seen Brad Garlinghouse make the rounds, but getting additional voices talking about this in big forums. Obviously, Fox Business is a uh, highly viewed channel. I think that will make a massive difference. So again, please do support the community. Check out the video. It'll be linked down below. Now, just a quick reminder, if you are concerned about what you see going on here, uh, Ledger has uh, their Nano S and X back in stock, the uh, S in the family pack. So the link's down below. Uh, I have an S or an X. I gave away an S in the previous giveaway that we had on the channel. So make sure you stick around for future giveaways because I am planning something big, but I'm waiting for just that right time to announce it. Um, so again, linked down below uh, if you are looking to pick up a Nano. Now, courtesy of James K. Filan, this is the response from Larson and Ripple regarding the SEC's filing where they had been making these uh, claims about the interrogatory responses. Uh, they had filed a motion to compel. The SEC objected to that. And so then this is the response. Again, remember, uh, no Garlinghouse on this one. Only Larson and Ripple will go through it quickly, uh, not look at every single thing because it's a seven-page filing, but just a refresher on what's going on, and we'll get you up to speed here. 
So defendants Revel and Chris Larson respectfully submit this reply in support of their August 31st request for a local Rule 37.2 uh, conference. The SEC letter response constitutes a refusal to comply with basic obligations imposed on all parties under Rule 33. The whole purpose behind the liberal discovery afforded by the federal rules of civil procedure is to avoid surprise and trial by ambush. To this end, contention interrogatories serve a critical function. They are designed to assist parties in narrowing and clarifying the disputed issues in advance of summary judgment practice or trial. The interrogatories at issue and defendant's letter motion are crafted precisely to address the what defendants believe are issues as to which there can be no genuine dispute and which defendants believe will facilitate the resolution of motions for summary judgment or narrow the issues at trial. Again, this is more on a clarification standpoint standpoint they want to bring everything in uh, to get towards that summary judgment and not have this broad scope. The SEC alleges that every offer sale and distribution of XRP by defendants over an eight-year period was part of a single unbroken offering of investment contracts as that term was explained in the SEC versus Howey. There are more than 1,700 contracts reflecting these offers, sales, and distributions. The SEC has asserted that it may prove the existence of investment contracts based on the specific provisions of the commercial contracts by which defendants sold XRP based on evidence outside the four corners of the contracts or both. Ripple's interrogatory number two focuses on the first of these opinions or options and asks the SEC to identify any specific provisions of the contracts that the SEC may rely upon to prove its case. The SEC refuses to provide that basic information. The SEC argues that it need not answer interrogatory number two and six other interrogatories because under Howey's progeny, the contours of the investment contract may come not just from contracts, but also from statements made in commerce and the very nature of character of the instruments. That is a non sequitur. In interrogatory number two is focused on the contractual language and asks the SEC to identify the terms, if any, on which it plans to rely, even if the SEC were correct, that the terms of the contracts need to be the sole or even a necessary basis for its Howey argument. Defendants are clearly entitled to an answer as to whether the SEC plans to rely on any contractual terms, and if so, which ones. The SEC refuses to answer interrogatory number two because defendants suspect a truthful, sworn answer would reveal that no contractual provisions actually bear the weight the SEC intends to place on them. So this is a pretty bold accusation on the Ripple or that the Ripple team is making here. They're saying that if the SEC answered this under oath and answered it truthfully, it would reveal that they've got nothing. <laughs> so very interesting thing here. At, now again, this is on this very specific item regarding those contracts, but it is important in setting the parameters here. So the same is true regarding identification of the common enterprise in which XRP buyers allegedly invested and whether Ripple's efforts were necessary for XRP purchasers to receive profits among several others. Again, this uh, line of questioning that they're going down here is to uh, discredit or refute the how we test in this respect. Each of these interrogatories addresses issues that defendants believe are essential elements of their defense, and for each of them, the SEC has transparently refused to provide direct answers to avoid providing supporting evidence. There you go. The SEC, again, working towards uh, dodging questions, refusing to provide direct answers, and being very circuitous in the way that they're behaving. The SEC can argue all at once to the court that truthful answers to these interrogatories are not dispositive under the interpreta their interpretation of Howey, but what it cannot do is refuse to answer the interrogatories as written. The deadline for fact discovery was August 31st, and discovery is now largely complete. 
Defendants are entitled to binding representations on potentially case depos- or dispositive issues. Indeed, Howie itself was decided on stipulated facts, yet the SEC is still equivocating about its most basic allegations. Rule 33 prohibits this gamesmanship. The SEC must, like any ordinary litigant, respond to the interrogatories that defendants served. Rule 33 requires the SEC to provide complete responses to the interrogatories, specific as possible and not evasive, even when and precisely because those responses reveal fatal weaknesses in its case. The SEC has to answer. Even if it weakens their case, you still have to answer the question. And that's what's, uh, I think, frustrating Larson and Ripple here. So they'll hit a few points. The SEC must provide non-invasive responses. uh, So they'll go into further detail there. The SEC has not to this point provided complete responses to the defendant's interrogatories. And then they will go into detail. Now, due to the lengthy nature of this, I won't go through every single item here, but you can see they uh, hit on each of the additional interrogatories. I will link this down below if you want to see further on here. And make sure you're following at Phylon Law so that you can see as he's posting. And then follow me at the chosen one with a U, as you can see up in that top banner, because I'll make sure that all of these get circulated, at least on uh, my Twitter. So this is coming from Kellogg, Ceresny, and Flumenbaum. Again, the defendant uh, attorneys for Ripple and Larson. And at bottom line here, they want answers. No more dodging questions from the SEC. That's what they're looking for. So hopefully we can get some kind of ruling here from the court, whether that comes through some conference where they have to discuss this further or just a rule from the judge here. And again, uh, just as a reminder, this is being addressed to Judge Netburn. So hopefully she does come out and provide with some sort of response to this request in a short time frame here because we would like to see an answer here. And again, a courtesy of Phylon Law on his Twitter pinned up at the top is the timeline. So today is September 15th. The depositions for Garlinghouse and Larson will be deposed um, in the coming days. So it actually says that uh, Garlinghouse was scheduled for yesterday. I haven't seen anything uh, confirming that, but Larson is uh, planned for next week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can keep you updated on any results from those events that we hear and all the future updates as we will be seeing many in the coming days. Drop a like if you found any value in this video. And as always, thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your evening, and I will see you in the next one.